G'day everyone. You know, when I'm buying watches, one feature I really prize is decent loom. And unless you've done your homework, loom on some watches can be breathtaking, while for others it can be lacklustre. And yet, no matter how strong it is, it will eventually fade until the morning sun, or a convenient flashlight can give it a charge. How to solve this dilemma? Well, Timex might have the answer. So let's keep this video rolling and review the Timex Weekender. So here's the specs list with all the details, including physical dimensions, weight, water resistance, crystal, movement, and price. And before I proceed, I should let you all know this is actually my wife's watch, although it hasn't stopped me from getting it on wrist. Now, at the risk of sounding too philosophical, the famous writer Paolo Coelho once said, The core of beauty is simplicity. And I think this quote sums up everything that makes the Weekender a great and versatile watch. Its size and dimensions make it a great all-rounder choice. The diameter and lug-to-lug -lug measurements means it'll suit most wrist sizes. The thinner thickness and curved lugs help it sit flat and comfortably on the wrist. And the 20mm lug width means there are strap choices aplenty. I'll mention the dial in a moment, but that element, along with the modest measurements, make this a very androgynous watch that can be enjoyed by anyone. Not too masculine, not too feminine. But for those that want a bit more size, there's a 40mm offering available as well. And if the dial or case colour isn't to your taste, there's still plenty of other choices out there in case you want something more subdued or even louder. Running around the outer edge of the dial, you have a raised chapter ring with thin rectangular lines marking every minute, and short bolded squares at every 5 minute interval. Just underneath this, you have the 12 printed Arabic numerals running around the dial. One tiny detail I really love in this example is how each one symbol has a small curved angle at the top. A very small quirk, but one that I appreciate, as it gives those numbers a little bit of character. Moving further into the dial, you have the smaller 24 hour time markers underneath their respective AM equivalent. And completing all of the printed text further in is the similarly sized and bolded Timex logo, along with Indiglo text at the 6 o'clock position. To kind of repeat myself, this dial is a paragon of simplicity done right. There's no complications to distract the viewer or fuss over, the chapter ring is visible but not overwhelming, all of the relevant information is bolded and placed around the edges so you only see it when you need it, and there's just enough real estate in the middle to give it a clean and inoffensive look. Rounding it off at a well-proportioned, baton-shaped hour and minute hands, in a golden colour that matches the case. On a bigger watch, they'd look too small and flimsy, but on the Weekender, they're perfect. Just thick enough to accurately tell the time without a second glance, and their respective lengths reach their designated markers to a T. And a similar story can also be said for the seconds hand. Simply put, it tells the time and nothing more, but it does so in such a nice and simple way. Rounding out the positives of the Weekender, and probably its greatest draw card, is the Indiglo feature. Just pushing the crown towards the dial activates this element, which causes the dial to light up with an almost aqua-coloured hue. And this party trick answers the dilemma I posed at the beginning, where you can enable the light at any time and it'll shine brighter than nearly any loom watch out there, and better than even some of Casio's offerings. Although if I did have a nitpick with it, its function relies on that crown being pushed in constantly. There's no delay timer, so once you let go of a crown, the light goes with it. Not a huge deal, but something I should point out. And this helps me slide into my mixed feelings about the Weekender. The crown is unguarded and unsigned, but for a sub $100 watch, this isn't a shock. The good thing about it though is that it's well sized and that it won't bump into or catch on anything, and using the push-pull action is fairly simple. Engaging the crown to move the hands though is a bit stiff, so it will take a few extra turns to move them to your ideal time. But on the plus side, I prefer a bit stiff to a bit loose. Plus with no complications, you'll rarely be using it. The mineral crystal is nothing special. As most of you already know, it won't be anywhere near as scratch resistant as sapphire, but given the price, this shouldn't be a surprise either. The steel case back just has the Timex branding and watch specifications, although one useful mention is the battery type powering it, so you don't have to take the case back off to find out this information. Like the Casio I reviewed before, it's handy, but very, very utilitarian. And I think the title of this video reflects the big negatives I have with this watch, in that you need to take things easy with it. The 30 meter water resistance means you won't be doing much wet activity with it besides dishwashing or plant watering, and the brass casing, while light and comfy, doesn't feel particularly sturdy and may be more susceptible to tarnishing and wear over time, especially if you get rough with it. Most people may already be familiar with the renowned Timex tick, and this example is no exception. In any social setting you won't hear it, but at home in a quiet area, that subtle 
sound is fairly audible. Not a great watch to have nearby if you're a light sleeper. This particular model also came with a weird multicolored NATO strap made from denim. The colour was fine and I kind of appreciated how they matched the strap keeper colours with the gold case, but if I'm being brutally honest it was one of the worst straps I've ever encountered. It wasn't comfortable to wear and it looked and felt thin, cheap and flimsy. It's the only time in my life I've ever thrown a new strap in the bin without considering to keep it as a standby. It was really that bad. My final issue is the price. When I picked this up several years ago online, it was about 46 Australian dollars after tax and shipping. At under $50, buying this watch is almost a no-brainer. But at close to $80, you're starting to open up other budget watch doors that can offer better durability and water resistance. I mean, heck, you can even have your Indiglo cake and eat better water resistance too for a couple of dollars more. And when you start comparing the weekend with its competition, both within and outside of Timex, it becomes a harder sell. Is the Weekender a bad watch? Not at all, in fact quite the opposite in my opinion. But is it outclassed in specifications compared to others at the price? Absolutely. If you really love the simplicity and clean layout of that feel watch inspired dial, want to reliably check the time of the dark and don't plan to roughhouse your watch much, I'd still say go and check the Weekender out. But if you aren't to know to any of these three points, then you might be better off having a look at what else is out there. If you've owned or still wear a Weekender, I'd like to hear thoughts about it. But that's it for now, and thanks for watching, eh?